Patrick, guess what came in the mail today? Oh, what? Yeah. Stick it in! What is up, party people? <laughs> Welcome back to Saturdays and Seltzers. My name is Kendra Middleton, and I am joined by Haley DeMello. Um, if you are new here and you are on YouTube, please feel free to like and subscribe. That was a note from intern Tyler to do so, but also feel free to like us on Spotify, follow us on Spotify, or leave us an Apple review, even if you hate us, because we love our haters around here. Um, welcome to this week's show. We are going to start, as we always do, with our HLH segment, which is our high of the last week, low of the last week, and an unexpected hero of the last week. Haley, your high hurts my feelings. Also, yeah. how are you? Even though we've been talking like, literally all No, day. I know. You just murdered that intro. Fabulous job. You. you hit Thank all you. the... It's beautiful. Um, but hi, buddy. Um, I'm good. My week was good. I'm very busy, but, you know, we're out here thriving. It's all good because my high is the Bruins are... <laughs> So sick. So yeah. Sick. And, and Charlie Coyle's gonna be a girl dad. That's so the exciting. Mayor of Weymouth, some are saying. It's true. He is the mayor of Weymouth. If you don't know who Charlie Coyle is, he's a player for the Bruins and his wife Danielle announced on Instagram. I think Valentine's Day. Was it Valentine's Day? I think it was it right was, around. It was, was definitely like- she was inspired by Rihanna. So she came out and said that they are having a baby girl, I believe, in August. Not that they will ever hear this, but like congrats to them. I am fucking obsessed with them and their dogs. So I think this is rad, but yeah, the Bruins and like married Charlie Coyle and girl dad, Charlie Coyle are vibing. Yeah, I'm here for it. Um, they did lose the literal one game that Kendra and I went to together. To the Kraken, <laughs> so um, that sucked. That <laughs> but was a shitty game. Ever since then. And I mean, before then too, just that game at home for some reason, um, but Haley and the Bruins great. have both come full circle since that moment. I know. I know. I was really in the in the trenches. For, for a <laughs> Haley there. has Mercury not. Mercury was truly in retrograde. Wait, can we tell them where your ID was found? Yeah, for sure. We could talk about that. <laughs> so um, my wallet got lost. I thought I left it on the Amtrak. Um, and I, uh, I just moved. But where I used to live was right near the Amtrak station. So I walked home from the Bruins game. Um, and next day I didn't have my wallet, thought I probably left it on the train, waited for a month, um, heard nothing. Didn't cancel her credit cards though. Didn't cancel my credit cards, um, because I was just, you know, really, po- I'm a really positive person. I was really hoping that they were going to be found and, uh, never ended up hearing anything from Amtrak. Um, flash forward weeks later, um, to a couple days ago, I got a DM, um, on Facebook and it was some guy and he was like, Hey, I found your, um, your ID at, uh, this warming center, which is like a homeless shelter. Um, (sighs) and I was like, Oh, that's so crazy. Like, did you see my wallet? And he was like, no, just your ID. And I was like, Oh, crazy. Okay. Um, so I had to go to the homeless shelter and pick it up. And the lady was like, I have to check you in. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not here to check in. Just getting my ID. She was like, oh, okay. Um, So that was crazy. Um, And then they found the rest of my cards on the side of um, the train tracks, like uh, like under a bridge. Um, Someone threw them down. No sign of the wallet, just my cards. Um, And I still haven't gotten those yet. Those are with somebody in downtown um, who has them and will allegedly be giving them to the police station, but hasn't yet. So I will keep you updated. Still haven't canceled my credit card. This except this my like to be a month ago, over a month ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure someone can pull up when the Seattle Kraken played at TD. It, but it was the weekend before we went to Jacksonville, which was like January, RIP January sixth. I can't even believe. Okay, there were so many triggering <laughs> statements in that one. Like, look at that. Okay. Anyway, um, so the Bruins are so sick, and I am hopefully getting my. I uh, got my ID back, so that's great. Um, and I just really hope they keep it up. They're fucking so good, and I just yeah. I just need a after what we'll talk about later, but I need a I need a Boston championship of some kind. So it must be nice to like crave the championship feeling, like because it's like oh, we just you know it's been a couple years, and I'm just like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty nice. 
Yeah, yeah. fuck you. Um, <laughs> so my high is that oh, I got... <laughs> Did you just see what my high is? Wait, I got lobster flip-flops. They're like sandals that are lobsters. Um, And it looks like the lobster's faces are hugging your feet. And the end of it is like a tail. And it just like, it's so cool. I don't know. They're fucking sweet. And I am going to definitely wear them with like the most beautiful sundress you've ever seen. So it's like me in like a white sundress. And then I just have lobster flops. Mm-hmm. Um, So that's a high. Mm-hmm. My other high is that the Jags hired the Bills receiver coach, Chad Hall, which is like, I don't know if I love that name or hate that name because love he it. sounds like he would be like the fuckboy villain and like a Disney rom-com. Or the fuckboy residence hall on campus. Yes, Chad that Hall. guy. Um, But like if he can turn Calvin mm-hmm. Ridley into like – any form of Stefan Diggs, perfect. I'm here for it. I will him. take it. I will sacrifice a kidney. I don't know. But like, if that happens, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll have, I don't know. I'm, I will do something, something, yeah. something will be done. That was definitely a high. Yeah. I encourage um, you to check out Kendra's socials. Um, she has been posting lots of lobster flops picks. Um, they're pretty sweet. Uh, no free feet in this economy, though. No Please free, remember. no free feet, though. So she will be wearing socks going forward. With the I could put them on my hands. Yeah, yeah. I have really yeah. ugly hands, so like people don't want pictures of those. Um. So if my high made you sad, I hope my low makes you happy. It doesn't, though. Okay. Well, anyway, the Bucks are fucking sick, and they, they are. Yes. I'm a little bit upset as a Celtics fan because they're creeping up and I don't like that because history has proven that that does not bode well for the Celtics. And I'm a little bit nervous. I'm hoping we're through injury season, but we still have some season left. So I just, I don't know, man, those Milwaukee Bucks, (laughs) they always get me and I'm nervous. I have thoughts. If you don't understand the lore of this argument, Haley, if you haven't figured it out, is an all Boston sports fan. Jacksonville obviously doesn't have a basketball team. I know a lot of you probably know this, but if you're new and have never listened to this show, my mom is from Wisconsin, grew up going to Bucks games with my cousins. Therefore, I'm a Bucks fan. My mom's the only one in her family who left Wisconsin. I'm the only one in my family who left Jacksonville. Perfect. I just hit my head on my microphone. Um, <laughs> not the jewel Haley's jeweling Haley is vaping shame the, in, the thing is I'm like shame. oh I, I'm like oh in post Kendra's talking about the buck so I have time it's not like we're on vape. YouTube or anything yeah we're also on YouTube I forgot about that <laughs> okay um, anyways the bucks I think they're second in the east at the moment Drew Holiday was a fucking beast the other night. He's my favorite guy on this team. I don't care if me and Chris Middleton are related. He's my favorite. Um, Mm -hmm. I also love that he spells his name J-R-U-E. That's fucking so cool. It's so, he is so cool. He's (laughs) so fucking cool. Him and Bobby Portis, like, have swag for no reason. It's like, you know, like, sometimes, you know, a guy who's, like, really tall and, like, you're just like, you could have been an athlete and they aren't an athlete. And it's like, you're tall for no reason. They are just cool for no reason. Like they're like Bobby, especially, but anyways, like the other night, I don't have TNT, which is like a travesty, but I couldn't watch the game. So I was just watching like the ESPN, like whatever thing. And then watching clips on fucking Twitter. And so Without Tatum playing and with the injuries that you guys are going through and the fact that we still have the majority of this championship team together and like all of the big guys are still on this team, I'm just like, we should have won that game by a million points. And the fact that like Drew Holiday put up 40 and that's kind of what saved our ass hurts my feelings. Are they sick? Yes. Am I so confident that they're going to make the postseason? Yes. Am I completely confident in this team winning a title with probably the last year they'll still be together? No. Yeah. I mean, and the thing is, is I know, like, I was a 
Jags fan this season. I don't want to fall into like a bandwagon fan of whatever teams you're a fan of, but just being your friend and following this team now, they are so likable and it is so frustrating. They're so likable dude. because I just, it's like, I know that they're easily, I would argue are well for sure. Our biggest competition in the East, probably right now, how it looks our biggest competition in the league. And I just, you know, I can never count them out. And I always, every season we have this conversation with each other and, you know, we always end up, just, someone ends up really happy and someone ends up really sad. I was bummed that we lost, um, even with those injuries. I thought they played really well. They did. Um, really strong, but I thought the Bucks looked great. They looked a lot better than I was anticipating. And I think the thing with Boston is you get really confident in such a winning record and being number one that when teams come and surprise you, it kind of punches you in the balls and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> it yeah. makes me feel a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, so. it's true. I had a couple NBA notes later. We can just talk yeah. about the one because the other one is just kind of like, I don't know. I'll mention it. Um, but Joe Mazzula was named head coach today. Haley and I talked on the phone earlier about this for like 20 minutes, had some good civil discourse. Um, but I think that Celtics fans should be happy about this. I think it's totally earned. I know that you're excited about it. Um, like what are your major takeaways? Yeah. So, um, first and foremost, I think he's a a really big player coach, right? Like I think he's very player oriented. The guys seem to like him a really lot, a lot, which is huge um in the league right now I think that a lot of the teams that you see really struggling or a lot of the surprise trades or moves around are because of these coach player relationships that aren't working or the organizational relationships aren't working and I think that right now Boston is in a really good place with not only their front office but getting that restructure especially after the scandal that came at the beginning of the you know whole situation and move there so I am happy that there is a little bit more stability, right? Like coming out of that, there was still kind of this interim situation. And I think now that there's a permanent position for him, uh, we can start to, you know, really build and move forward on that relationship and be able to kind of see where that goes. But I am excited for, I understand why people are excited. I'm excited for the, the team because if they're confident in that decision and the players are happy with that, then I'm happy for them if they feel like they can play for him and and succeed. So, yeah, my only comment to Haley on this earlier was, do I think that he's deserving? Yes. Do I think that this is a great hire? Yes. Am I excited for this team who that's I was I was talking to Haley about this the other day, too. I think that I love the Bruins and the Celtics because I love the players on the team. I just obviously don't love the culture around Boston sports sometimes, specifically more so the Red Sox and the Bruins, but I love the Celtics. But after this whole email situation, it obviously left some kind of sour taste in people's mouths. And it's like, I am so pro people changing and learning from their mistakes. But it's like when things happen multiple times and I am sun- subtly hitting, hinting, sorry, I don't know why I can't speak right now, at the Joe Mazzula arrests. Um, there was one when he got in an intoxicated altercation at a bar and was booked. And then another time he was intoxicated and grabbed a woman by the throat. Um also at a bar, which he was booked for, for domestic assault. And it's like, do I think that people can change? Yes. Do I think that people learn from their mistakes? Yes. Did it happen multiple times? Also? Yes. My only thing that I'm kind of like, okay, this is a little strange to me is just the fact that you go from replacing a guy who was let go for misconduct, not even the first time in the workplace, misconduct, sexual misconduct with, you know, someone And it's like you go and replace them with someone who has been booked for domestic assault. It's and it was the second offense of theirs, even though the first guy wasn't um, a woman. It's still just like, I don't know, that's kind of weird for me. Like, I don't think in a lot of other situations, people would have that opportunity. And it's like, I like I said, I do think that this is a great hire. I totally agree with you with the fact that he does seem like a player's coach. They seem to love him. A lot of the fans here love him. I'm glad that the Celtics are having success, even though like we're rivals. I don't really care. Like I'm always pro player. It's just, that was like the only thing where I was kind of like, I understand why you need an interim head coach and you need someone within the organization because you don't know what's going on with Ime in this current lawsuit. It's just to me that that was like, okay, that's weird. Yeah. I think the biggest takeaway too, is like from our conversation earlier, even just now, like the most irresponsible thing we can do is not talk about it and just pretend that it didn't happen. And, you know, 
be able to have that kind of discourse and be able to talk about that is is so important, not only just in the NBA, but in every sport. I think it's important to look at everybody's point of view and just be able to kind of understand where people are coming from. Because I know like just to hear people like hearing people talk about it on Twitter and things like it is very exciting for the city. People really like him, but I think it is important to talk about the things that you pointed out and also, you know, kind of just acknowledging that and, you know, keeping that in mind going forward. Um, yeah. That everybody kind of, you don't know what someone's past is and, and, you know, not that they can't change. I a hundred percent believe people can change, but it's important to talk about things like that to see that it does happen. And, you know, um, hopefully we can prevent it happening going forward. Yup. Um, that got a little deep, but I kind of, I like that sometimes. Yeah. Um, my low, um, are <laughs> also kind of depressing. Fuck. Um, Doug Peterson's final landing spot for the coach of the year votes. I just did not expect him to not at least be runner up. Like, do I understand why he didn't win? Yes. Am I biased? Yes. I just, I think that he should have been runner up. And the fact that he wasn't was kind of like a head scratcher for me. Um, I also kind of hate being a brunette. I think I want to be blonde again. And my other low is that the world kind of is fucking ending. Have you seen all this shit with like, um, the oil spill and the Chinese balloons and the fucking alien things that have been shot down by the Pentagon and like all the other fucking crazy shit going on? Yeah. And the craziest thing is that I just... Like, I can't really go on the internet because I'm so prone to, like, going into deep, like, oh, my God, what's happening? But I'm starting to see, like, the conspiracies coming out that each thing is covering up what's going on somewhere else, right? Like, that the oil spill yes. is being covered up it's, by the balloons or yes. that the balloons are being distracted, you know, are distracting us from something else. So now I'm like, now I don't even know what's really going on. And just my prayers go out to people that are affected by what's going on and, and that are, you know, their lives are being negatively impacted. I, I feel awful. And I really hope that we can kind of rally and support behind them, but I have no idea what's going on. It's well, getting so, very like apocalypse, I like, know. men in black type situation. Yeah. Like Dude. I'm really not here for it. We're kind of, we're in like New England. So I feel like whenever stuff like this happens, we're very like, wow, that's crazy, but that's over there. So like, we don't really have to well, worry no, about because, it. Because like, I don't feel that way at all because I'm a fucking psychopath. I saw one, there's also like, an outbreak of some virus in Africa for the second time in the last year that has like a 90% infection rate. But the thing that's freaking me out about this oil situation, whatever the chemical, I don't know, fucking chemical leak. There was also a chemical leak today somewhere on the highway, by the way. Um, but the Ohio river connects to so many waterways. So many. And so they're many. calling this like America's Chernobyl, which is like fucking weird also they had like some meeting this morning and i think it's east palestine ohio which is kind of weird um but the representatives for the country or country company that owned this train car cart on the train didn't even show up to the meeting because they said they felt scared <laughs> like you should feel scared oh my god also, okay, but like, how do you prevent that from happening? Also, who's buying these chemicals and why? There's like, just so much to like unpack with the whole situation. And it's one of those things, like I said, like, I don't know that we have all the information and it's we really don't. frustrating we never that we will. don't because it makes everything so much more sus. We and never will. There are people that are like, you know, going to get really sick or, you know, die or some horrible things are going to happen to them. And we don't know why. And that's really frustrating. Yeah. Um, so that was our sad part of the podcast this yeah. week. Done. Um, no more sad. Done. Finished. No more Until sad. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're back, baby. Um, my hero is Dunks Biscuits. I know I ranked them a seven and a half, but they're th okay. No, don't even give me that because they're not biscuits. They should not label them as biscuits. I think that that's actually a travesty to call them that. But whatever these little fucking cheese pouches are, are fucking delicious. But they're not biscuits. Um, this is a huge win in the Boston column 
versus the the Kendra column. But um, they also have Dunkin' Donuts in Florida. I know, I know, but Dunkin' is just it's 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 different. I'm just so I was so honored that you rated them so positively because if you don't know, Kendra is very you know. serious about her biscuits. Very serious. I'm so serious about fucking um, biscuits. We were at the game in Washington, I believe, at FedEx, and a group of Commanders fans had a bunch of Bojangles <laughs> in the back of their car. And Kendra, we were walking around doing, looking to do some content. And Kendra went up to them, super polite, which is cr- crazy for me, right? I was like, like everyone was so nice. And um, she, they gave us a bunch of biscuits. And Kendra, like, where's the Bojangles? And they were like, oh, it's right there. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to go get a biscuit. And they were like, do you want a biscuit? And I was like, well, see, that's not technically really how it happened because they said, oh, it's about a mile away. And Kendra said, okay, we'll go walk there. And they were like, no, it's all right. And she insisted that we were going to walk to the boat yeah. and for these biscuits. She was like, You're no, right. no, no, we'll go. And then I they offered us the biscuits. And, but it, you were ser- you were like, I will walk a mile. You're like, that's not even that. It's not that bad. But me and like, no, we're not going to. I would have gone without you. We're not going to do that. Next to FedEx field by myself. I have never seen, like, you were on the verge of, like, tears. You were so happy to have a boat. <laughs> and biscuit. So. I was happy to see your positive Dunks Biscuit review. I'm a big Dunks gal. You know, I haven't tried them myself, um, but I was happy to see that you like them. A Southerner like yourself. Um, They're not biscuits. I was honored. I was honored on behalf of the city of Boston that you enjoyed the Dunkin' Biscuits. I am so freaked out for people to hear your hero because they're going to get an insight of the type of shit that is on my phone. (laughs) Not only that, but there's... Yeah, there's yeah, and the, this is the shit that we talk about, like I'm like with just how, all the okay. time. Just get into it because I don't even remember how it came up. Um, I don't remember how it came up either. Um, but uh, we were talking about memes and old memes, and Kendra just kind of said out of the blue, she was like, "Do you guys remember like that old meme with like the frog clapping its ass cheeks?" And we were like, what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You know, like the frog. And she's like, the frog with the skinny ass cheeks. And I had no idea what she was referencing. So she pulls out this photo, uh, if we could put it in here. Uh, and there's also a, a great photo of my reaction to the photo uh, that our friend Celtics Beat Steve took. Um, Shout out, Steve. I have gone... Not one day since that photo was shown to me, not seeing it sent by either Tyler <laughs> or Kendra. It was rent so free funny. in my phone. It's so and funny. it is just like Tyler is absolutely obsessed with this. Meme. <laughs> like he 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 texted me today when he saw I put it in the notes and was like, I, I don't go a minute without thinking of this. And it's I was like, so funny. I was like, so I'm so like I it's hilarious, but I'm also just like, I don't get it. By the time you guys hear this, it'll already be up on our Instagram, or if you're listening to this and haven't heard it, um, it's just so fucking funny, dude. It's so funny for no reason. <laughs> And Kendra was like literally trying to like school us in meme culture. And she was like, no, it's an old meme. Like, you <laughs> understand? And we were like, oh, okay. it's the internet. God damn it. Um, so that was absolutely hilarious. Also, shout out to Kendra. Super Bowl Sunday, she hosted me and a couple of our other pals and made a charcuterie board and a bunch of good snacks. And it was a lot of fun. What was your favorite of my snack option? The, oh, like- the pickle bar was really fun. The charcuterie I, pickle board. Shout out Grillo's Pickles for hooking it up. Yeah, I was honestly very impressed. Um, the dip we absolutely destroyed. <laughs> the buffalo chicken dip that I made? Dude, okay. I remember I Steve think- being like, you, like, literally like, you guys just destroyed that. I had so, it was so good. I I'm a sucker think- for buff chick dip. Dude, sucker. who isn't? It's the best football, like, food. I agree. Yeah, dude, so good. Um, we can just talk about our Super Bowl recap here yeah. before we get into like some more grading, like we started last week. Um, first Super Bowl thought 
over everything is the fact that there was a like the first female flyover is fucking sick. Those were the coldest pictures ever. I swear to God, you know how like they like people on TikTok and stuff will do like the 2022 coldest pictures of the NFL season. That's mine. Yeah, that was so cool. I was just like so cool, so badass. Like they were so sick, like just beautiful, and empowering, and strong, and just awesome, and just ballsy like you think about that like to be a fighter pilot and what goes into that it's just unbelievable um I had the opportunity to see the Thunderbirds a couple years ago and they had a bunch of female pilots and it was I just remember being like it's so badass you're not even a bunch right but like more like some in the like catalog you can see them and I it's just so cool so shout out to them um shout out to the media for covering that I think that was yeah um yeah. Never think, never think I'm going to say shout out the media again, but like, that was, I was glad they got the exposure. That was cool. I definitely loved that. I love that they highlighted it. I loved all the guys on Twitter who were like, well, can we get a shout out to the first men's flight crew? And I wanted to be like, can you tell me what year the first men's flight crew was? And then fucking for sure, dude. Or like, if, if they're white, be like, can you tell me about the Tuskegee Airmen? And they're, they're not going to know anything. They won't know anything. <laughs> oh, true. So, uh, like, I'm yeah. at those people. <laughs> yeah, fuck you guys. Um, also, Nick Sirianni has officially given me the ick. Not only was he, okay, me and him could never work out, first of all, because if you don't know this secret about me, my friend Maraid and my friend June got me to this point where now I can only throw up hungover while playing the national anthem or having someone sing it to me. And if I needed that in like a time of need and he just started crying, that would be bad. Also him like what did you see the clip that went viral of him this week and Jalen was like telling him not to like celebrate on the sidelines. I don't know what that was over. I don't remember that exact moment in the game, but I've seen the clip a lot. Ick. Yeah, I I've, I saw it this week and I was kind of like it was cringe for sure. It was definitely cringe. Um, I, I can't remember what it was over. Yeah, I don't, I didn't, I didn't know what it was over when I first saw it on Twitter. I don't think it's the, the tweet said what it was over, but I'm sure we could look it up and figure it out. Um, But yeah, that was definitely cringe. The crying was kind of intense. Um, I love guys who cry. Yeah. And I get that it was probably. The the national anthem lore is so deep with you. It's It's so (laughs) deep with so many people. Dude, I like. I'm obviously an American. I support us in like the Olympics, like whatever, cool. But like, I will purposely try to, sh- like, when we went to Providence last week, we were like, yeah, we could miss the national anthem. Like, I try to miss it because it just is so, like, the lore is just wild. No, and, and it's like, not I- even that she's like not patriotic. It's like she will throw up. Like, I know my, like, no, my I brother. Have, I have been literally- there. A marine, like he's a vet, like went to Afghanistan. Like I am, like pro America. Whatever. Pro America. Just the song is like, like it's, yeah, baby. um, it's just like a natural response. I forget what that's called. Like when you train something to, I'll die on respond. this hill. Our national anthems should have been Yankee Doodle. Oh my god! Hell <laughs> yes! I swear yes. to God, um, I'm also a big "This Land Is Your Land" stand. Y- yeah. That was always I the like that number one. one Memorial Day concert song. Fire. Ooh, um, Fire. So yeah, Sirianni cried, gave you the ick. Big bummer. Um, also, Sodgate. I know that you've heard of Sodgate. The grass during the game. I listen, Haley and I both are anti-barstool, but pro part in my take. And I was listening to them this week, and they were saying that apparently the guy okay so there was a university i can't remember if it was like oklahoma or like kansas oklahoma. state or something like that Oklahoma developed the turf mixed golf grass with football grass to create this turf and like the guy who installed it or whatever i don't remember the exact lore of the scenario has like installed the grass in like two of the last places that kansas city has won the super bowl therefore he has two rings with kansas city this was like his third time doing it and kansas city won the super bowl and i get that it's a situation where both teams can make adjustments cleat wise and stuff like that and it affects both teams 
But it's just weird because that's just I don't think that that's a coincidence. Sorry, call me a hater. I'm in my fucking hater era. But like, I don't know, dude, it was pretty sus. And it was like very blatant that like something was wrong with the turf. I don't remember. It was a Jalen that changed their shoes really early on in the game and everyone was fucking falling. I think there was a couple penalties caused by it. Like uh, Sodgate might be real. Yeah. And Honestly, I think it's 100% fair. And I remember in, in the game, us looking at each other like, this grass sucks. Like, they literally can't play. It was like they were slipping and sliding all around. I will say real quick, um, I am pro-MT, PMT, and also I am in love with Casey Smith. I am obsessed with her, and she tweeted at me one time, and I almost cried. So I will say that. Um, and there My are celebrity other- crush is Big Cat, and I can't even lie there to are you. There are Barstool personalities I absolutely adore and love and follow. Robbie Fox as well tweeted at me one time, and I almost- It's literally just them and Casey for me. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, I I definitely think it was a little sus. The more Eagles players that changed their cleats, like shout out to all the internet and football detectives that have figured this out. And I know, obviously, we just talked about PMT went into it a ton with like all these numbers and crazy stuff that they saw from people that did research. Like that's insane. Um, whether or not it's true, I don't know. I always love hearing about this kind of stuff come out. Obviously, as a Patriots fan, like Deflate Gate was horrible for the brand. <laughs> Deflate Gate was fucking hilarious as like a consumer outside as, of the box. As anybody game. that's not a Patriots fan, yeah. it was hilarious. Deflate Gate was I did not have fun. Funny. However, like things like that, I think really like make the NFL really like, you know, it's Oh, also, we just love the drama. Like, we love the tea. Like, and I love no it on television. Give it all to me. Like, I, I love it. Like, it's great. So, um, if I was an Eagles fan, I would be pissed. And I think they were going to be pissed either way. Um, whether there was a sad gate or not, we would, would be talking about something else. Um, so, yeah. Crazy stuff, though. Um, halftime show. We watched this. We obviously watched this game together. So, we've talked about it a lot. The things that obviously stuck out to me were, I mean, how, how quickly, okay. This sounds so fucked because like, I hate speculating if a woman is pregnant or has gained weight or anything like that. Like it, like it's one of those things that we all see and we all think about, but it's fucked up to say, or like whatever, but it is a natural thought. And I was sitting there, what Haley, like 30 seconds into this. And I was like, Rihanna's pregnant. And I was like, I hate saying that out loud, but she's definitely pregnant because one, obviously the outfit kind of made me feel that way Two, She wasn't really throwing it back. Like I expected her to, but that being said, visually the performance was fucking incredible from like watching on the couch. I obviously can't speak to how it was in person, but despite her not being able to Rihanna, she rihanna And I hate everyone that's like, I expected more, blah, blah, blah. She's fucking pregnant. Yeah, I was obsessed. I We had an absolute blast watching this. Uh, we forgot how many Rihanna bangers there are. Um, thought it was super badass for her. Not You know, we kept wondering who the special guest was going to be. And I thought it was really cool that she didn't bring one out. I thought it was- Well, you know, she, she said to- she was- going to but it was she was going baby. to because it was the baby and i will say as a witness kendra did not do it in any kind of ba- like body shaming way she clocked that like so fast and we spent a majority of the performance being like is she or isn't she like we don't want to assume and then when she confirmed mm-hmm. it we were so excited um the british vogue pictures dropped today with her and asap and their baby and they look amazing um i you know her fenty products went up crazy number 200 percent in sales the yeah. fenty plug was honestly my favorite part of the entire show we both just on. screamed and we both just screamed we were like, <laughs> like i literally went online and ordered fenty products so i could get the clear bag for stadiums and it got delivered right before this show the only thing that disappointed me was i wanted ponda replay and i wanted disturbia yeah i would agree i would agree with both of those points um I would have swapped Ponda replay for bitch better have my money. I was kind of She played like, that. She opened that. Yeah, she opened with that, which was badass, don't get me wrong, but I was kind of like it's unfortunate that we're not wasting a space but utilizing a space for a song that you have to censor the entire thing. 
Yeah, cool. that's fair. Yeah. That's why so, I never like everyone was like, well, what's she going to open with? And I was like, I don't like any of these options, but that never would have been my guess just because I feel like I, if I know the NFL, like I think I know the NFL, it's like they don't want any controversy or anything like that because like it's always the Karens on Facebook that are like, my kids are watching this demon shit. Yeah, it was awesome. I am a big Rihanna stan. Me too. Uh, I thought awesome. it was great. Yeah, love that. As far as commercials, I only remember three. I remember the Fubi commercial because it was obviously, we all freaked out like everyone else, I'm sure. Everyone was like screaming at each other. Haley was like, Tyler, are you sitting on the remote? And I was just like running back into the living room from the fucking kitchen. Like, what is going on right now? Why are you all yelling at each other? And then everyone was like, was that a commercial for like 10 more minutes? We were like, was that a commercial? Like, and then everyone got on Twitter and it was confirmed. Um, I remember the Jack Harlow commercial, but I could not remember what it was for, but I do remember thinking it was funny. And then whenever the sad farmer's dog commercial came on, we were all like, let's talk. We're not watching this shit. This is evil. Like we all literally just like blocked out the TV and talked for like the majority of whatever that situation was. Yeah. Um, I have written down some of my favorites, um, the Diana Flores commercial that NFL did was so sick. She is such a bad ass and she is so awesome. And just, I really love that they've been highlighting these female flag football players. I think they're really cool. And they not only are from different nationalities and different parts of the country and the world, but they all are really amazing athletes. And I think it was really cool to kind of watch that. Um, and then have it be an NFL commercial was really awesome. And then I also wrote down the Ben Affleck Duncan commercial because I am obsessed with Duncan and Ben Affleck in Boston and JLo is so beautiful. And every time I see her, did you see their tattoos younger. this week? Her what? They got matching tattoos and JLo's is fucking hideous. It, They're both ugly. Um, well, it's funny you say that because I liked JLo's more than I liked his. I hate the I, no, no, no. thing. It's 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 giving very Tumblr 2010 uh tattoo account. Um that it, yeah, it was and also I kind of don't understand why people are still doing that because isn't it a thing that that is like the beginning of the end when people do that? Like it's it doesn't I don't think the statistics are great on couple tattoos. His back tattoo is the cringiest fucking thing I have ever seen. If you haven't seen Ben Affleck's back tattoo, please stop what you are doing. I don't care if you're you driving a car. Ben Affleck over. back tattoo. It is wild. <laughs> like incredible. Um, okay, that was a good one. Anything else? Any others? Um... No, I can't really remember any. And it's weird because we watched all of them. The uh, lack of Whopper commercials was my only other Tragic. Comment. Absolutely tragic. I needed Burger King to do it and do it big. I needed like them to remix a Rihanna song with the Whopper song. Oh, the Blue Moon one was good. That was kind I, of funny. I don't remember that one. It was like all prior to the Super Bowl. They did um, like a Miller Coors like hype up that it was going to be this commercial where it was Coors versus Miller. And then they do the ad on the day. And at the end, it's like, just kidding. It's a blue moon ad. And it was like, wow, that was that's wow. okay. That's fair. No, I've that's seen that one on Twitter a lot. I'm just like, looking, I literally just looked up like some, like trying to remember. And I, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't really remember many of them. My only other comment that I want to make about the Super Bowl is that I think Travis Kelsey spewing over and over and over again that like the narrative was that the Chiefs were fucking underdogs this season is so dumb and so annoying. And I know we talked about Brittany Mahomes. She's whatever. Like, I don't like hate the girl. She's annoying. Whatever. Fine. But she jumped onto this bandwagon by sharing a Bart Scott take on Twitter. And I'm like, if you're trying to make an argument 
the last fucking person that you should be using as a source is Bart Scott. Okay. He tried to call, didn't he try to call like DeMar, like a dirty player or something like that after the, like, shut the fuck up, Bart Scott. Shut up. (laughs) Yeah. I think, you know, and I've heard this a lot this week. Like, you know, I feel like we definitely did not hear from her or Jackson very much this season comparatively to last season. And I think that was very much on purpose and very much strategic by his team. Totally. And I think it was a good call because I, for one, enjoyed not hearing about them this season. Same. But with that being said, obviously now. They probably enjoyed not hearing about me too, so fair. Yeah, right. And so I, you know, they win the Super Bowl, so they kind of have free reign and we just have to deal with it for the next, you know. Totally. You know, sucks. And that's fine, just, you know, like it, that's sometimes how the cookie crumbles. Live live your life. You earned it. Whatever. Yeah, um, I, I really want, like, obviously, like, you know, I don't ever want to, you know, dislike anyone that I don't know, but that <laughs> port side video was kind of like the nail in the coffin for me where I was like, I just don't like this person. The TikTok that he uploaded that I sent you of him running with Sterling is the scariest video on the fucking internet. I swear to God that he was going to drop that child. And then like in the other clip, he's like fucking screaming and freaking out the baby on his hip. And he, Patrick can like see the baby like flailing around and Pat's like, give me that. <laughs> it's just so funny. It's so funny. So with that being said, our first team to grade why don't you kick us it has off to be the chiefs it has to be the chiefs. Off, um, if you missed last week's show we are going to grade all 32 teams seasons last week we did the sad cat section this week we have kind of the super bowl winners and some miscellaneous <laughs> um we're gonna we're gonna start off with the chiefs <laughs> because it just makes sense to start off with the chiefs and the eagles i we both gave them a pluses um my reasoning is that if you win the Super Bowl, there is no other way for it to be anything other than an A plus. Um, and I think the biggest takeaway on the season for me was, and I think a lot of people too in the media is that maybe not, I don't know. I haven't really heard anybody talk about it, but I haven't been consuming a lot of Super Bowl media this week. So I'm not sure, but it's like when you get rid of the then best receiver in the NFL, still top two for me, I think the best right now is Justin Jefferson. I don't know if you can argue that if you want to, fine. But when you lose Tyreek Hill and it doesn't even matter, that's just insane. You have the MVP of the league and the Super Bowl and Patrick Mahomes. There was never a doubt in my mind because I even said on this show, like even with Patrick Mahomes sprained ankle, like the Chiefs are it. Like, I don't care if it's fucking Chad Honey. Like, I think that the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. Um, And then leading back to Chad Henney in the game against the Jaguars, when you had to rely on Chad Henney, you still got, you still got it done when he was in for what a quarter, a little over a quarter, maybe like when you can make Chad Henney who retired after the Super Bowl, fucking get you into an AFC championship game because he had to, because we didn't know what was going on with Patrick Mahomes. And as a fan, I was still sweating in that moment. Kudos to you. Um, and I also had that I, we can talk about Eric Bieniemy after you tell me why you also gave them an A plus just because I have some thoughts there as well. Yeah. So I gave him an A plus too. hundred percent agree. I think that, you know, for a really long time, I've been a Patrick, Patrick Mahomes hater. I'm going to be honest. Like I really, there's something I found really dislikable about him. Um, and this weekend, honestly, I think kind of turned me around. He has huge balls. First of all, like he, for him to get out there and do what he did on Sunday was kind of incredible. And, and, you know, he's a really amazing quarterback, the best in the league right now, you could argue. Oh my um, God. He is, has been for two years. Been. In my opinion. And I think that I've been in denial personally for quite some time. And really on Sunday, first of all, Sunday was just a great game. It was an awesome game to watch really great. Better football. than I expected. Better than I best Super Bowl I remember in, in a long time. I, I was like, I had a lot of fun watching it and maybe it's because I wasn't really invested in either team. I didn't really care if either team won, but they both just played phenomenal football and it was really fun to watch. It's basically the whole point of the Super Bowl, right? Is the two best teams in the league playing each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm going to say the same thing about Andy Reed. I, I love Andy. Andy Reed's coaching style um, obviously has paid off for him at this rate. And what he's been able to do in Kansas city is incredible. And I think that it's, you know, time that, you know, not only me, right. But other people, you know, start really seeing him as as a powerhouse coach. I think he's a really great football coach. And yeah, 
He's also got, we talked about Doug P's balls last week and, and Doug P has huge balls. And I think so does Andy Reid. So yeah, for sure. um, well, yeah, a lot because, of the plays, I mean, he pulled out. Go birds. Uh, yeah. Go birds. Go birds. <laughs> Thank you. You too. <laughs> um, and then also just their offensive line played amazing. Absolutely. Played amazing. Their they understood the assignment. Out. They, they understood did the assignment. They went in there and. They, they had to they, though because he's. Like, I know he's they had to, dude. Well, that's the thing. They uh, that's what I mean. They understood the assignment. They they understood what they needed to do to win that game, and they did it, and they did it well. And the Eagles' defense looked like nothing out there comparatively. So I was just uh, really impressed with the Chiefs this weekend. Um, Patrick Mahomes definitely gets my respect, uh, and I will be uh, rooting for him going forward. And just also a lot of that I did consume a bit of Super Bowl content. Um, more so than I usually would, I would say with a chiefs super bowl, because I've been like kind of anti chiefs in the last couple of years, um, just cause they're good and the Patriots are getting worse. <laughs> just like the way Certified. things go. Hater um, era. But honestly, like he seems like a really great guy, really stand up guy, uh, very well spoken, very educated. Um, and I also had no idea he had tattoos until this week, so I kind of love. Yeah, him more for he that. does a lot of work for the community and for the Kansas City area. So honestly, Dude, yeah, I'm for him going forward, uh, congratulations to them. And yeah, uh, I think it was great. Yeah, well, we said last week, like, I'm so pro Patrick Mahomes. It's just like the way that the media treats him and his family makes him so unlikable. And I totally yeah. agree. I fucking love Pat. Like, I think he's the dude, but like his family's just annoying. Yeah, I think um, when and you that pull sucks back the to curtain say, on him. yeah, that sucks to say out loud because it's like if anyone said that about my family, I'd be like, well, yeah, true. I um, agree. I but like, agree. Yeah, but like, I, I get it, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I want to talk about Eric the enemy for a second. For I, sure. th- I've said this since the Jags were kind of looking for Doug P last year, you know, Byron and Doug P were kind of like a lot of people's favorites to win the job, but I was also pro Eric the enemy and pro Kellen Moore. And I do think that both of them deserve a head coaching job. That being said, it was announced that Eric the enemy is interviewing to be the Washington commanders offensive coordinator. And I just don't understand why one he doesn't have a head coaching job yet because that offense has been incredible under him the entire time that he's been there. Like, look at the fucking talent that they had and that they've retained. And like, sure. I know that Andy Reid probably has like his hand in some of the play calling, but for the most part, like it's Eric the and his play calling is phenomenal. And I just don't understand why he would like, he had like, he, I don't understand why he would interview for an offensive coordinator position with a team that doesn't even have a quarterback when he has his hands so deep in Patrick Mahomes that it's like, why would you leave that? I just, it's just weird to me. And it's, I don't, I don't understand how he doesn't or hasn't had a head coaching job. Yeah. I think it's really interesting. And, and obviously we went to Washington this year. We know that their offense could use a Eric Bannamy for sure in their system, but I a hundred percent agree. I think he should definitely be in a head coaching conversation. Um, Stephen A had a really interesting take on first take this week where he talked about the fact that Andy Reid is still calling some plays means that the credit isn't necessarily always given where, you know, to that OC position where it necessarily should be. Um, So having Andy Reid be so hands-on all the time as a head coach, Stephen A argued holds back Eric in that interview process in terms of going for a head coach position, which I thought was an interesting point. I don't think it necessarily, I don't think that is the whole story. It's an interesting point. Yeah. But it's like, I don't care if you're calling zero plays or all the plays. If your offense is working out the way the chiefs have under you, he deserves a head coaching job over a lot of these fucking guys that have been hired in the last couple of years. I I mean, like, Oh my God. I mean, I, the list goes, I, the first one going to my fucking Urban Meyer. Um, but that's just my two cents. I just don't understand. I've been so pro him and Kellen Moore since obviously yeah. the Jag situation. So I think that they both deserve to be head coaches. Um, the Eagles, I gave an A minus, A minus just because you got to the Super Bowl and lost it. On the plus side, you found your quarterback in Jalen Hurts. There was a lot of question there over whether you were going to have to try and find somebody else um, if that draft pick was going to work out for you. And he did a complete 180, and I'm happy for them. Like I said, 
another sad face for me is that Nick Sirianni is kind of cringe, but he's a good coach. Um, the other things that I kind of am like, eh, um, is that nobody expected them to be here. That's also a plus. Like, I don't remember very many people talking heavily about the Eagles earlier in this season. And the fact that they were in the Super Bowl, especially in the division that they play in, is fucking crazy. Um, and I'm worried that the only other reason that I'm like disappointed in the fact that they lost the Super Bowl because I was cheering for them is that they just have like the Bengals have a lot of guys who are questionable to return next year and they've got to sign some contracts. They've got to pay some guys and this team's not going to look the same. Jason Kelsey's probably going to retire and he's goaded. And I just think that it's yeah, Sirianni is an awesome coach. You have Devonta Smith. Jalen hurts is awesome. Um, you're going to have a lot of changes and I'm not sure that you're going to be in the same position next season. So I don't really, I'm a little worried about their ability to keep the ball rolling in the right direction to constantly be in an NFC championship game. Um, but the NFC is not that great right now. So maybe that's not something they're worried about. I don't know. Maybe he can figure it out, but that is the only reason that I'm like a minus not a, um, do you have any other thoughts? Yeah, I gave I gave him an A minus two. I, I would go, you know, A A minus. I can't really pick one or the other. Um, you know, I think they had a really strong showing this season. It's a, again, I hate to keep saying this, but I find the players on the Eagles to be incredibly likable, um, which is crazy because I think that, especially as a Boston fan, I never would find myself cheering for Philly in any. I love Philly, and I they really got me this like this Super Bowl. I was really rooting for them, and you know, I think they, I think Kansas City ended up being the better team on Sunday, but also like, um, I think they had a really strong season and a really strong showing. Um, and like you said, the NFC is obviously struggling in in certain areas, so I wrote that they have a pretty good draft this like upcoming draft. So, you know, seeing what they're able to do there, I think is going to be really interesting. Um, Nick Sirianni, the, the Philly fans seem to really ride for him. They seem to really be into him and really support him. And they're going to be the first fan base to tell you when they want someone out. So if they feel confident in him and his ability to coach, then I'm sure, you know, we'll see by next season, by the end of this time next season, you know, uh, how we feel about him, but, you know, obviously I think to go 14 and three with your team is pretty impressive in the season and to make it to the Super Bowl obviously is, is most teams goals. Right. So, uh, obviously a win would have been better. My heart breaks for Jason Kelsey. Um, seeing him crying at the end of the game was really, really tough. And, um, you know, it's, it was going to be tough either way, right. Whether he won or and Travis lost, but I think it hurts a little bit more just because this is probably his last season, but seeing what he's done for the city of Philly and not only their team, but like just their organization in general, he's just such a stand up guy. And I thought it was really cool that we got to highlight a lot of those kind of players during this matchup. So shout out to the Eagles. Um, I thought they did great. And uh, Eagles fans, sorry, but also like, why did you flip over a car before the game? okay true true so the eagles have two first round picks Mm -hmm. um one from a trade with the saints their Mm -hmm. own pick Mm -hmm. they don't have four five or six though but they have two sevenths so i think if they can front load there in those first three rounds that's obviously awesome um, and it kind of obviously makes up for the fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds, but it kind of sucks that they have two seventh round picks instead of like a sixth and a seventh. Yeah, I think they make up for that mm-hmm. in like twenty twenty seven. Like it's it's a later year, they a later draft that they make up for it. But yeah, it's, so yeah, they they have, gonna see. Yeah, we're gonna see. They, I mean, they can they can draft, and they've proven that. So I think that if they are able to get some really strong contenders in that first round, then that'll kind of cancel out the lack. Yeah, of later they just on, have a but, lot of people to replace. And Jason That's Kelsey the other thing. is tough. Yeah. Tough. Yeah. Those clips that they put out about their mom this week were really cute. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, so yeah, super cute. So I love the Eagles. I think that they could, like you said, if they draft properly, be here again in three or four years, but it's just a matter of that if they're Patriots. I will let you go first here. Mm-hmm. And tell me your grade because mm. we probably have some similar points, but this is your team. And yeah, so I'll start with this. And we talked about this before we started the show. It was a great season to start rooting for the Jags because um, 
I have never in my lifetime seen the Patriots play so poorly that I had to physically get up and walk out of the room. <laughs> um, and that was the the Vegas game. They this season were more disorganized and more. I don't even want to say pathetic because I love the fucking team and I love Bill Belichick, but there were moments where I was like, this is fucking pathetic right now. Like what I'm watching is, is not the franchise that I grew up getting to skip school and go to the parade for. Like it was almost unrecognizable to me. And it was really disappointing because, you know, and especially like us being friends too. And and my friends in sports all across the country, right? Like if you're a Patriots fan, everybody knows you're a Patriots fan and usually we can make excuses, but this season there was not much that we could we could say other than, you know, Matt Patricia shouldn't have been play calling for the offense. That's the biggest thing I think we could have taken away. Um, I, I had think the Matt that, Patricia and Joe Judd situation in my notes, too. That was yeah. a disaster from the start. Yeah, I think that the cold, harsh slap of reality hit a little bit harder because I am a huge Matt Patricia fan. I think he's an incredible defensive mind. Um, He's a cool dude. He's a cool dude. He's a stand-up guy. He's a family guy. Um, But I just was really disappointed. It did not work out at all. Um, It wasn't working out by week three. And I could have told you that Bill Belichick wasn't going to do a damn thing because he is stubborn at the end of the day and he wanted to see how it would work out and it didn't work out and it didn't work out in week four and it didn't work out in week five and then it kept going so um I just was really disappointed in my Patriots this year but I am hopeful that with the hiring of Bill O'Brien we can start to get some motivation huge hire to the offense huge hire um I think his relationship with Mac Jones is going to be essential to him as a quarter. I have so many thoughts. I know. I, I basically, my feelings on it are if they can't figure it out by the end of this season, we need to re we need to rethink everything. We need to rethink everything because I don't know what needs to be changed. Um, I just, I can say that, you know, we go 14th in the first round. Uh, Patriots can't draft for shit. They never have, have that in my to. notes as well. Uh, yeah, you have, have. You have, haven't. You have inability to draft as of late. As a lifetime fan, they have not been able to draft ever. In my opinion. I don't think that they. Uh, and when they do, it's for a position that we don't need. So it's like just, a fucking kicker. Yeah. So I honestly, or whatever it was. I, and you could make that statement for literally, I remember last year we were in Baby Vegas Zappy. and I was like, I don't know what's going on. I, literally was like, I told oh. you when they drafted Bailey Zappi that he would play at some point this season. I told yeah. you that when we were in fucking Vegas. Yeah. So, um, obviously I love the Patriots, right? Like I grew up with season tickets, you know, they are my franchise. Um, what the Kraft family does for the the Foxborough community. And I grew up 15 minutes outside of Foxborough. So um, I worked a lot with his organization and the YMCA and things like that, the McCordy brothers and their work that they did with, um, with us and people with intellectual disabilities. So I'm a ride or die Patriots fan, not a great season. I gave them a C on the season and that's how I see it. So Haley put at the bottom of her notes, the meme from SpongeBob, where it's like the Patrick's holding the coffin and SpongeBob's like, okay, get in. And I'm like, I'm really the meme where it's like, I've come for your pickle from SpongeBob because the Jags are like the next up and coming of the AFC. And I'm like, yes. Um, My thoughts were, okay, this is going to be the most controversial thing I think that I've ever said to you. And I don't know how you're going to take it, but I I think that Bill Belichick has to go. And I don't think that, I think the Patriots fans, I'm going to tell you this. I think the Patriots fans know that, but they're not willing to accept it themselves. Therefore, they're unwilling to say it to other people because I feel as though in Patriots culture, that feels like a sin because he's always been the guy. But in life, you have to know when it's time to let go and walk away. And I do I think that Bill Belichick should retire? No, I would never if I were him. But if I'm a fan, I'm sitting here and I'm like, all right, hang it up before you ruin it. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, 
Yeah, it's an interesting point. I think that you're hundred percent right that even if Patriots fans think that they're never going to vocalize it, um, he's just do- done too much for the franchise. And the thing that makes me also really hesitant on that idea is just the relationship that he and Rob Kraft have. I can never see a situation yes. where that would thousand that, yes. would, that I, separation would not happen amicably. I um, totally get it. I, I can't see that. But at the same time, I definitely think that there is there are some serious issues that need to be taken care of. I think that he is a great defensive mind, Bill Belichick. I think he he is really strongest when he gets out there and works with the defense. And you have videos of him in practice, you know, getting in there with the guys. And, and he's uh, one of the best coach, in my opinion, of all time. Um, oh, see, no time. question. No so question. it's just a matter of figuring out what's not working. And I think that Bill is not the thing that's not working the most, if that makes sense. It's totally. Yes, so I agree. I, but I, I I see your point, though. Yeah. And I can see where people would think that. Um, it's they, it's hang it up before some, it gets sour, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also gave them a D because of the un. I above this, I have the Matt Patricia and Joe Judge situation, but we kind of talked about that a little bit. But this plays into that as well. The unnecessary drama between Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi. You cannot have that happen. And the way that it happened was the worst part about all of it because it was at each other's expenses and also at the fans expense, because I can tell you from going to a couple Patriots games this season, after all of that happened, there was not one game where at one point I didn't hear somebody either cheering for Bailey Zappi or a Bailey Zappi fucking chant in the arena. I've said this on the show before. Do I think that Mac Jones is the better quarterback, safer quarterback to go with? Yes. Do I think that Bailey Zappi also could be like fine or like a really good backup? Yes. He had a great college career, but that was just so unnecessary. And I think it cost you Mac Jones. I really do. I think it cost you his confidence. I think it cost you his willingness to be around. Do I think that Bill O'Brien's going to change that? And do I think that they absolutely had to get someone in Mac Jones' corner to turn that around? Fuck yeah, I do. Do I think that that's the right hire regardless of Mac Jones? Yeah, I do. But that was the only way that you were going to reel that kid back in. And yeah. he was very as vocal as he could be this year about the offense situation and the play calling Even on the sidelines, I swear to God, I was tweeting clips of him fucking screaming at people. And I don't blame him. When you go from having the best offensive coordinators in the nation, the best talent in the nation at Alabama, the best receivers, offensive line, running backs, whatever. And you go and you like basically like an NF, that is the closest, that program and for the last 10 years is the closest fucking thing you're going to find in college to the NFL. Mm -hmm. And so you move him from a semi-decent situation last year to this situation now. And I do not blame him for being as vocal as he was. I really don't. But you have now unintentionally started a war between these two. You have fucked the fans' heads up. Let me tell you that. I also have the inability to draft as of late. And the biggest reason that I'm giving their season a D is that I don't see it getting any better. With the way that their offseason's going, like we said, the inability to draft. Um, Bill O'Brien's a fucking huge hire, but the fact that I think that Bill is also like at the end of it, I just don't see this situa- situation getting better because there's not going to be enough change to the point where it's going to get figured out. Right. And I don't think that Mac Jones is a franchise quarterback. Do I think that he's going to, I think, I think that he is going to have like a fucking Nick Foles type of career. I really do. Yeah. Um, even as a Patriots fan, I'm going to be honest, like the Mac stuff this season, I found very off putting. I understand why he was frustrated. I think he had a right to be frustrated, but as a new England fan and having Bill Belichick as your coach, the number one thing is to never let them see you sweat. And I think he let that happen a A lot lot this season. And I think that not only does that mean he's losing confidence in himself and we're losing confidence in him as a fan base, but his teammates are losing confidence in him too. So I think that a lot of that, that drama between the two um, was unfortunate. And I think you're absolutely right. I think at the end of the day, also new England fans are very black and white results driven. So if, Bailey's getting out on the field and throwing more plays. They're going to cheer for him every single time. And it's going to be an ongoing issue. 
at the same time, we have seen that the Patricia Jones dynamic did not work. It was not working. They could not communicate well with each other. They did not seem to get along at all. And it seemed as though whenever Bailey Zappi was on the field, more cohesive, clean plays were being called and executed. So whether or not that was on the, the play playbook was different. The quarter, I really do right. think so. So it's like also that you have to take that into consideration. With that being said, I don't know that Mac Jones is the Patriots franchise quarterback that's that's next. I, I don't see it because of this season and how it how it shaped out. Um, I don't think he is really riding with the Patriots as much as maybe he was before, if at all. Um, I still, as a fan, as a Patriots fan, see him very much as an Alabama quarterback, to be quite honest with you. Um, and I think a lot of the fan base felt that way too, as demonstrated by what you got to experience, um, at Gillette this year. So I really hope that he can turn it around with Bill O'Brien this year. Uh, like you said, having another person in his corner is going to be huge, but at the same time, I'm a big fan of competition. And if Bailey Zappi can keep putting the pressure on him to be a quarterback and improve, yeah. And if Bailey can get out there and be a better quarterback, then I'm going to cheer for him because at the end of the day, it's whoever's helping better the organization. And I think he is a talented kid and he has shown that he can perform under pressure. So his work ethic is awesome. My only concern for him is his height. It's giving Drew Brees. Yeah. Yeah, Well, yeah, that's a, that's a huge thing. And I think that obviously, you know, that's not something you can improve upon or work on, but uh, it is very much giving Drew Brees. That's a good point. (laughs) But it worked out for Drew Brees. So I guess we can say. I can't, re- I guess we can't really knock him for that, but I'm very interested. Like I said earlier, I love the drama of the NFL and kind of that constant battling between, between players and continuing to improve and, ex- and exceed expectations. So I'm excited to see what happens this off season. Um, I think we'll have a really strong understanding of where they're going to be at come training camp time. Um, I grew up going to totally. Patriots training camp and we they- should go. It's, it's honestly like one of the most impressive things that you can, you can, I will see if I can get us credentials for, for it's, I would, Hey, I would love that. It's so fun. Um, and I think that they take training camp obviously as every team does very seriously, but I think bill treats it even more so like a regular season. So we'll be able to see kind of what his headspace is at and where the play calling's at. So um, I'm hoping by then we have some sense of organization, but we'll see. Also, we always suck in preseason. So. I've come for your pickle. I've come for your pickle. Go Jags. Go Jags. Um, Last but not least for the week, we have already gotten through like a quarter of the league after this. That's pretty crazy. Um, We have the Packers. I gave them a C minus. Haley, what did you grade the Packers? So it's funny because I was going to write in here and then we ended up just talking about it. And other things I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with a C um I I don't know why don't you go first you go I gave them a C minus and my reasons being bad for Green Bay that Aaron Rodgers wants out good for Green Bay that Aaron Rodgers wants out um Christian Watson and Alan Lazard played better than people expected I think that's a fucking plus for them I think that Jordan Love is fine. We haven't seen enough of him to really know. We only got a couple plays during the the regular season from him. Um, But I think he's going to be fine. I think historically, especially like when we look at like recent guys, it's like Brady sat for a while behind someone and Rogers sat for a while behind someone. Great players, obviously, you know, like they learned from the greats. And it's like Jordan Love is doing that with Aaron Rodgers. So it's like, do I think that Green Bay could strike gold twice potentially yes um I just don't know because I haven't seen enough of Jordan Love but I think that he's going to be a good quarterback so it's like that's also a positive for you guys if Aaron Rodgers doesn't come back um I also said C minus because anytime you have no postseason with Aaron Rodgers I think it's kind of a fail because you're wasting a season of his career you're wasting a lot of money um even though I'm not as pro you need a top quarterback to get to a Super Bowl or win a Super Bowl as a lot of people I think when you have people of Tom Brady caliber, Aaron Rodgers caliber, Patrick Mahomes caliber, et cetera, you should be making the postseason. Um, but I think that it's both of their faults that they're in this place because Aaron Rodgers obviously took such a big contract that they couldn't afford to keep a lot of the same guys. And I obviously think he's kind of a polarizing figure, obviously, in the sports place. 
Um, but the Packers kind of enabled it, but they kind of had to because he's the guy and he's your guy and he's been your guy and he's your fans guy and whatever. That's why I gave them a C minus. I think that they're obviously going to have a lot of retirements too. We don't really know what Bakhtiari's situation is. Um, but you know, I think that your receivers are good. Your quarterback situation could be good. I think that Green Bay has always kind of figured it out in a way, but I worry about the division that they're now playing in because the future is just so pro Lions and potentially pro Bears. We have the Justin Fields stuff in a second, but like that's going to be like the new tough division, I think. Yeah, I mean, I love the NFC North. I think me that, too. I think it's going to be so fun to watch in the coming years, and especially yeah. seeing who they bring on board and who they trade for. And as they start to grow those teams, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what they shape out to be. Especially, especially if they get rid of Rogers, like, I can't wait so to see what money. they do. What they do, and and you know, I know we always say like, oh yeah, I feel like the Bears are very similar to the Lions in that way, where they get these really interesting players and trades, and you know, it doesn't work out in the season. But I remain really positive. I'm, I'm excited at least to see what the NFC North does, and and those games I think are going to be some of the the more fun games um, to watch next season in those rivalries. Um, I'm going to say that my biggest thing with Green Bay is that I feel like this season more so than any season I can remember in recent time, they were very mid. It was just, they, a, Oh yeah. Yeah, totally. They, because you know, they've always been kind of mid, but like a little bit more towards the top. And I think that they were very mid this it's year. It's been their division forever. Yeah. Forever. It has and, been no question. The Packers are winning the NFC North. But they had to get rid of so many people. And obviously a lot of their Mercedes Lewis is fucking old. David Bakhtiari is old. Aaron Rodgers is fucking old. Like, but I think even more so than, than a division conversation, like the Packers have always been kind of up there in, in the top conversations there. And especially Rodgers too, with the, because the of him. conversation. And I think that as you pointed out a couple of weeks ago, he's so emotionally out of there. He is just not invested in what's going on. And I think not only does that have an impact on the morale of the team, but also just kind of the performance, obviously going eight and nine for the season and, you know, 25th special teams, 21st defense tied for second or tied, tied for 12, excuse me, offense. Their last game was the game they played against the Lions and they lost. Yep. So going into the off season, not a great look. And I think it's going to be some serious restructuring time. Like you said, they had to completely restructure to afford Aaron in the first place going forward, how are you going to be able to take that money and use it maybe in a more effective way? Getting rid of Javante Adams was the biggest question because like, who are you throwing the fucking ball to? Thank God that draft pick worked out. But like, I don't know. What if you You don't have Aaron Rodgers? But if you don't have weapons for him to throw to, it doesn't do anything. And that is proven in this season, in my opinion. So uh, we were talking earlier. I love the Green Bay fan base. I think, you know, they they are awesome. It's my absolute bucket list item to go to Lombardi. I would love to go. Um, so I know that at the end of the day, they're going to ride or die for that franchise. And and I wish them the best next season, but honestly, I couldn't help but look at this and just being like, they were super mid nothing really excited me about them this year. And I feel like they're usually at least in the conversation for the NFC championship. Like you said, they usually have the division and, you know, not maybe last season, but a couple of seasons, not too far away, they were in the Super Bowl conversation. So it, it's kind of unfortunate to see where they've come and and how many people they've lost, like you've said, for what. So that kind of brings us to the last couple of NFL things that I want to talk about. The biggest kind of conversations heading into the offseason, as far as quarterbacks go, are obviously where is Aaron Rodgers going to go? But you also have Derek Carr, Justin Fields, and Jimmy G too. Derek Carr is obviously out. That's already official that they have parted ways. Um, Jimmy G, I like his contracts up. I don't really know what the situation is with him. They have that whole Trey Lance situation to worry about. And like Brock Purdy's having surgery, whatever. But like, I don't even, I, I, Aaron Rodgers is doing this DMT thing and I just feel like he's going to retire. I don't know why, but I think he's going to come out of here and just be like, yeah, I'm fucking over you guys. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I totally. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it last week that I just think that it's giving big Brett Favre energy to me. 
<laughs> when Brett Favre was doing that thing where he was retiring and then coming back, like at this point, I'm like, then either tell me picks. you're going to play or like, I'm over it. Like just yeah. leave. You know what yes. I mean? I'm just kind of yes. like, let's not play games. I yes. felt the same way about Tom Brady and I'm the biggest Tom Brady fan. So it's kind of like, you know, just like, I'm, let's not play games. Like this isn't high school. Are you going to play 1, or not? You're making millions of dollars. Is it really that hard of a decision? I care so little about what Aaron Rodgers is doing, especially because the Jags are for once, like not in a quarterback conversation, but I'm the most curious to see what's going on with Justin Fields because the bears have the first pick again. You obviously took Justin Fields two years ago. Like you have CJ Stroud and like all these guys sitting like ready to be picked, but it's like, I, a lot of people are saying they could see him going to like Carolina and it would be like the best fit for him to go to Carolina, which like, I kind of agree. And I get that. But I just, I don't understand the thought process of shopping Justin Fields other than the fact that you could take another rookie quarterback and work on them for a couple of years. Is it just because you're going to owe Justin Fields like money soon and you don't want to pay him or like what, what is really going on here? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So that's like my only thing heading into the postseason that I'm really like, all right, what the fuck is going on with Justin Fields? Because I feel so bad for him. And I think he's fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. So that wraps up our NFL stuff into some closing stuff, pop culture. I want to talk about the Karens hating on DeMar's jacket at the Super Bowl. Everyone's like take online was that we, the reason that you're alive is because we prayed to God for you and you wearing like an antichrist denim jacket to the Super Bowl, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, first of all, this is like the most America centric shit ever. Like just because you prayed to your God does not mean that Damar, ja- Damar has to believe in fucking your God. Like it just, it Damar Hamlin does not have to believe in your God. He just doesn't. Okay. I also don't think that it was like people are like how people are taking it. Do I understand how people could be fucking offended by this? Sure. Do I think that he meant it that way? Obviously not. I'm just so sick of people finding ways to fucking talk about him for some reason. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I, it's just kind of like, I don't know. I agree. It's just let people wear whatever. If it's not, I mean, if it's not bloody and disgusting and, and absolutely obscene, like just whatever, why does it matter? I just, you know, there's so many other things that we could be talking about and upset about. And it's, you're right. It's just such a Karen thing. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. Yeah. Absolutely super. Over it. Super. Um, my um pop culture thing for the week is um on unfor- it's kind of a sad one it's kind of a bummer but it came out today we that- said we were over sad I know. okay all right maybe i won't talk about it hold on i have another one let's see let's wait see. tyler gave you an idea of what he wants us to talk about Maraid is blowing up my phone shout out Maraid hodgkins <laughs> he's oh, asking yeah. me to drive to seattle <laughs> oh my god anyways oh, well i this is huge um big time rush is going back on tour i don't even think i know a single big time rush you don't i don't think i don't think i think you might have you definitely didn't like i'm too old for that wait i gotta look them up now i can only play i think like seven seconds or something of it um and then also i have here that melissa mccarthy is playing ursula in the new little mermaid movie and that dropped today the new trailer for it and it's really cool i'm really excited Um, i like that play I know I'm this also, one. I like that play. <laughs> oh yeah, banger. Absolute banger. Fire. 100 percent And um some drama coming out of the gossip girl world, as Penn Bagley said that uh it was actually Blake Lively that got him out of some drug and alcohol addiction problems that he was having during the filming of Gossip Girl. So shout out Blake Lively. That's really cool. And out, out. season of you is out the first half. Um Tyler and I were just discussing this. I have not seen season three of you. I'm very behind. So I need to catch up on that before I watch the new season. But I've heard really good things. So cool beans. That's my okay. stuff. Perfect. Um, tea party segment. Mine is just that Ron DeSantis is, I guess, trying to get something passed that would allow higher education. I don't know about high school, at least higher education 
to, and I think, I don't know if it would require, I'm not quite sure of the verbiage on this bill or what have you, but to track women's period cycles for athletics, um, to prove that they are female athletes or whatever his fucking, it's just gross. Like, this is just so weird to me. Like, it's so fucking weird and it's none of your business. And I don't understand how he can even like think that this won't be affected by HIPAA laws. Yeah. I just, I just don't think that you need to know about menstruation cycles of women that it's just so unnecessary. Let alone require it. It's just disgusting and shame on him. I think that it's really awful. I like, I don't really get into politics on this show a whole lot, but that's just, I don't care what side you're on. That feels fucking weird. Like that's just, that's fucking weird. And being from Florida, I'm just like, why is it always us? (laughs) Um, What is your tea party? Um, I don't really have much for tea. Uh, the NBA all-star weekend is coming up, which is super exciting, obviously for basketball fans, such as myself, I'm really excited to like the player, um, playground style of picking the team. I think that'll be really cool. Um, I did want to shout out, uh, I don't know how to pronounce her name. So if I butcher it, I'm so sorry. Uh, her name is Jamad Fien, F-I-I-N. Um, and she is, she does basketball camps, uh, and she's all at the Celtics. She does a lot of work with the Celtics. Um, and she's absolutely gorgeous. And she is representing at the NBA All-Star Game this weekend. And she has been posting a lot of great content. And um, I think she's really cool. So you should check her out. She does a lot of great work, um, not only just in Boston, but she's doing stuff around the country now. So it's really cool. She does a lot of uh, female empowerment stuff. So That's dope. Um, my Tea Party segment should have been that there is a fucking G-leaguer in the dunk contest. <laughs> Like the dunk contest used to be like the most iconic (laughs) contest in all of the like all-star weekend competitions. And now it is like the biggest joke. And it's so sad because I loved the dunk contest as a kid. Yeah. I mean, some of my favorite memories are watching the dunk contest with my brother, like growing up. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it'll be interesting. I have a friend in the G League, so I can't really knock him. But I love the G League, dude. I fucking love the g league i I'm love so, the g league I, yeah. I really i think it's super fun um at the same time though i'm kind of like for the dunk like for the content like give us two dunk contests i'm not saying that they both can't participate in the same you know the same one but i i, I, I want to see more dunks so I like i want to see all stars dunking yeah i just um I so that's mine my tweets of the week uh wait oh tyler wanted us for tea party to mention the olivia wilde drama oh yes with asap rocky um if you didn't hear about this i know we have like an older male audience sometimes (laughs) asap rocky is rihanna's partner he -hmm. is the father of both of her children and they were he was obviously in the crowd at the super bowl this week filming her and olivia wilde who is jason sudeikis's ex-wife she's an actress um made a comment about like thinking he was attractive or so I don't remember the exact quote but like kind of came for ASAP she said he was hot yeah and she she's very controversial on the internet for being a piece of shit and um yeah the entire internet was just like you just proved that you were more of a piece of shit than we already thought you were and she was like well I didn't mean it like that and we're all like well you kind of did probably yeah not a great look for olivia wilde um she is really like digging her own grave lately i don't Mm -hmm. know she's just getting rid of your dog to spend more time with your millionaire boyfriend is such a lame move yeah and there's um there's a lot of drama with her nanny if you've heard about that her previous nanny is suing her so it's like there's a lot of things going on with her and it does not seem that she is a nice person um, so I think Harry Styles might, might have dodged a bullet there. Um, but I am hopeful for, and th- th- but that can't be true because Jason Sudeikis is so nice. He's so cool. So I'm like, she must, maybe she's like secret crazy or maybe she lost it. I don't know. But don't her know. movie was not good. Not good. Rip. Don't worry, darling. was not good. Tweets of the week. Do you have a tweet of the week? I do. I didn't write it down, but we talked about it earlier, uh, prior to the show, um, AJ Brown tweeted back at Juju Smith Schuster, who tweeted a rather, um, 
I don't know. What, what were your thoughts on Juju's Valentine? He said he posted, so basically he posted a Valentine of um, James Bradbury, who hell had the holding call at the end of the game on Super Bowl Sunday that arguably lost the Eagles um, the Super Bowl. Uh, and it says, I'll hold you when it matters most. Um, and so Juju tweeted that out. AJ responded um, basically saying like, you're a piece of shit. And that wasn't really cool. The entire um, NFL came for Juju and it was fucking hilarious. And the fact that he called him TikTok boy. So good. Yeah. AJ Brown kind of flamed Juju Schmidt. Like, honestly, I saw the Valentine thing because I followed Juju Smith. I thought it was, was kind of funny. I thought it was funny at first. And then the thing is, is like, I think about it. I have to put myself in the mind of a Philly fan, and I know that they were probably furious, and they are one of the most funny, local fan bases. So I know that they were probably giving him a ton of shit. And also, like at the end of the day, James Bradbury has like totally owned that call, and totally, I think, a bit has been really respectable about it. So it was kind of like, dude, like, why are you gonna knock him when he's already down? Like. I this is why that. you use a burner, kids. But the thing is, is at the end of the day, like, it's also Twitter. Like, you also play f- pro football. Like, people are going to talk shit. Uh, sh- but honestly, like, people are going to talk shit. But shout out to AJ Brown for talking shit right back and standing up. It was the team. fact that the entire league was like, fuck you, Juju, for me. Yeah. And I was just, and the TikTok boy comment. Just like, even RG3 Roasting. tweeting how it started versus how it's going is so fucking funny. I love RG3 on Twitter. Favorite Twitter follow. Oh my gosh. One of my, I, he's one of those players that I have liked. I have loved watching him outside of playing football, like his ability to be like just his presence on Twitter. He's awesome. He's awesome. So infectious. Awesome. Like, he's really fun to watch, not only when he's playing football, but now I think even more so. I've, I've I even love him on the him. call, like anything. I yeah, want I think he's more great on the call. RG3. He's great. Yeah. I like um, him more now than I did yeah. when he was playing. Yep. My tweet of the week is. One, I have an anti-tweet, and it's that Evan Engram was flirting with New York. They don't want you. I don't care if you like New York City. You're ours now. Love you. But, like, fucking hell. Um, and then my other was, it's not a tweet, but, like, we're talking about PMT and the Barstool lore already on this podcast at least once, so I'm going to mention it. The fact that PFT said that bald Mark Davis looks like an infected nipple had me fucking screaming the other day. I was day. rolling. Literally. That was... So good. So funny. So funny. Um, um, also, Red Mark Davis's it. hair. Uh, it's, yeah. it, it is tragic. And, and I think the thing is, is the infected nipple is such an interesting comparison that we can all visualize. And just shout out to PFT with his creative mind for figuring that one out. Um, but yeah, that had me absolutely rolling. That was hilarious. It was good. It was good. Um, wrapping up the sad cat bet of the week. Uh, is that Tiger Woods is plus 160 to make the cut at the Genesis Invitational. The sad cat parlay was so close to hitting during the Super Bowl. <laughs> so um, close. It's, we are batting 500 on the sad cat parlay since it started. About to be over 500 with Tiger Woods. So hit that up now. Um, Haley, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, no, I will preview a little bit of what we're going to get into next week. We are doing a Kardashian boyfriend draft, which I am super excited about. So we will be basically taking a pool of all the athletes that the Kardashians have dated over the course of their time in the spotlight. And we will be drafting X amount of players on to our teams from all sports uh, because there's plenty to choose from. So stay tuned for that next week. I'm super excited about that segment. Um, other than that, uh, you're going to touch on it and I'll, and I'll follow up on that. But uh, yeah, I hope everyone has a great week. Yeah, we're going to move into the NBA season pretty much officially, at least until draft season. Um, my closing thought is thoughts and prayers to the Michigan State community. Haley works in college athletics, so I know that that hits super close to home. Mm-hmm. I just am at a point where I don't think that thoughts and prayers are enough anymore. Yeah, it is. Um, it's definitely tragic. My heart goes out to everyone at MSU. I know that not only does an event like that impact the people that were there, it impacts the entire student body and the faculty and the families as well. And obviously the biggest thoughts and prayers are going to go out to the families that were directly impacted by the loss of their children. Um, 
I think probably the biggest thing to come out of it for me was there was a Sandy Hook survivor that was also a survivor of the shooting. Um, and like you said, uh, at this point, it's kind of like, it's unfortunate that anyone should have to experience something like that twice in their lifetime, let alone in only a matter of years. So my prayers go out, especially to that young woman. I think that, you know, it takes a lot of bravery at this point just to go to school. And I don't think that that's right. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think the most important thing is showing our support to that community right now. So hopefully that they can get through it um, in a way that is beneficial to society and, and hopefully making some changes. But at the end of the day, I know we can't always rely on that. So. Yep. Um, for sure. Love y'all keep on sipping and we will see you next week.